Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Mandy from Hope Designs and this is a 12 inch cradled wood round from Loli Vethi. I have already scraped my first attempt. So instead of trying to be uber creative with my negative space swipe, I decided let's just go for the, the one liner. Um, the first color I laid down is Prussian Blue from Amsterdam. And um, this is Interference Red, also Interference Gold Sparkle from Color Art two of my faves and um, that is Apple Rose which is a glitz color from Color Art it's one of the primary elements glitz collection and I had something completely different in mind than what turned out on this one this color is Atelier Turquoise Light, one of my faves from them. This is the Fluid Free Flow, is what they call theirs. I'm going to use a black cell activator. I'm going to use it uh, on my swiping tool directly, which is a, I think it's a Liquitex number one. I don't remember. I said it in the first video. It's this one right here. It's the small square. I said it in the first video and then I scraped it. So I had a very terrible painting day. As you can tell, there's paint all over the puppy pool. Um, my husband may have rescued this painting because I was ready to scrape this one too. So I decided to do a voiceover and speed it up significantly because there's a lot of times where I stop and stare at it and kind of agonize over what it's not doing. <laughs> I did have too much pillow paint on the round as well, and that seemed to contribute to some of the composition issues I had because where I would try to... Um, I, I didn't want it to be a line straight across, and every time I kind of tried to to move the paint around, it just felt like the pillow paint was trying to swallow all of my efforts. So I'm sure it's operator error. But I asked my husband and he was like, I like it. Don't scrape it. I was like, well, you may end up getting to keep it because I don't like it. And I think I think I'd probably like it if any one of you guys did it. But I think because it wasn't what I had in mind, um, I love the colors. I really like the black one I did with the copper more. Um, but I had a similar issue where I'm like, it's just too much of a line across. I don't want it to do that. I want it to move around. So I was like, I don't like the way it's moving and creating these ripples. All right, so... All I'm doing is trying to keep those parts that rippled in a weird way from looking like that. So I'm just kind of pulling those edges out. One of them ends up kind of coming out further than I wanted. So some of my embellishing kind of bit me in the butt. So I wanted this to have more body and not just be straight across. And I know it's not exactly straight across, but... I wanted to have a little bit more movement um, and um, so that's what ends up being kind of my aggravation with this piece. I like the colors. I think my cell activator is also a tiny bit thin because um, it ran a little bit too easily where it should have held. Um, some of the cells are still really great. I like to keep some of those tiny cells. My husband really liked this one, and so he probably rescued it. The first one I did that I scraped before this one, I had tried to run the line across the round in a couple of places, hoping to kind of create some composition with negative space, but um, it, it was a good theory, but it just didn't turn out well. So I think it's one of these things where it looks easy, <laughs> But you go to do it and you're like, oh crap, it's not as easy as it looks. And so I do like the kind of the ghost cells from the cell activator swiping over the pillow. I think that adds 
some contrast and you can see in the in the middle that where our color is there is some movement um, I think I just don't particularly love the way it's spread out so I took my palette knife and I just put a little cell activator on the edge to try to bring out that edge a little bit I can't really tell that, that helped or didn't help so yeah I'm just gonna share it with you guys because it's part of the journey um, but on this particular day, I was like, I just, I really want to, want to try this thing that I have in my head. I was really tired and, but I still wanted to give it a shot. And so it, you know, <laughs> if you do fluid art, there are some days that just don't go well. You try to paint and everything that you do seems to bomb. And this was all I tried for days this is the only chance I really got to try and it was kind of disastrous so um, yeah whatever but my husband says that's one of my favorites that you've done recently and I was like really he said yeah I like it I'll hang it in my office if you don't like it I kind of wish I had also used a blue-black cell activator. I think that would have looked cool. It would have shown some blue d dimension. Um, and here's the challenge. When you get to this point where you're like, okay, I need to get enough paint off. I'm not wild about the composition. But if you start spinning too much, then your cells just get kind of sad, you know? So you can see that that's starting to happen and those weird little peaks are getting worse they're not like wavy on the let's see if you're looking at it on your right side they're not like wavy where they're adding nice you know soft edges like you see a little bit more on the left they're just like harsh peaks and they don't i just don't like them so what I did, and you'll see me do this in a minute, is I dipped my skewer, which I probably should have used a very fine paintbrush, but I dipped my skewer in my interference color, and I ran it around some of those edges in hopes that it would create some interest and um, also create a little bit more contrast um, in those places where there's ghost cells. So you can see where I try to mess with this and I'm not successful. <laughs> and I go back over it with house paint, like, please undo what I just did there, you know? And then I have to get that off. So, I mean, it's not like a Dutch pour where you can just hit it with a little bit of paint. You know, you're now creating a mountain of paint and some of it has to come off. So this, these are the struggles sometimes. And I definitely overthink these. Um, I see some of these wonderful negative space artists um, who just keep messing with it until they like it. And when I keep messing with it, I make it worse. <laughs> so I think it's just learning what's going to, what's going to work for us, right? All individually. So I will say as this dried, I like it a little better. I still don't love it. It's still not what I was going for. Um, but I do like it a little bit better. And if my husband likes it, then ultimately he can have the piece and it won't just sit here and occupy space forever and ever. Um, so if no one buys it or whatever, if he likes it, then that's fine. But otherwise, you know me, I would be painting over it. So you probably can't tell, but that's what I'm doing here. I'm trying to enhance it a little bit with some interference color around some of those edges. Um, in some places it's working well, in some places I'm making it worse. So <laughs> if I had gone through with a very fine paintbrush and touched up some places, that also could have been kind of cool. And I probably still could maybe do a little bit of glazing or something. Um... But at this point, I'm probably just going to resin it and see what happens. I did prime this round. Um, 
and it warped a little bit when it dried. So I reached out to Loli Veffy and um, Adriana is amazing about responding. And I know that sometimes that does that, but I just want to give you guys a tip for those of you who dry your cradled wood boards. She was saying you definitely don't want to prop them up when you dry them. And I did. I propped it up on K-cups because I'm so used to doing that. Um, so she said you want to dry it flat, like on a silicone mat or something, because the the board will try to warp as it dries. And that seems to be what happened. I put it up on K-cups, and I have it taped in the back, and it kind of warped in the middle. But what was interesting is after it dried, it went back to normal, mostly. So that's weird. Um, I also learned from another artist recently that you should prime the back of your boards too. I've only been priming the top and the sides. So hopefully that tip helps you guys if you didn't know that. You should dry them flat and prime the back. So this is a 12 incher. I use, usually use 8 to 12 most often. I don't think it would happen with an 8 inch board just because they're so small. But this is a 12 inch, so just for what it's worth. Um, but I was pretty impressed that it kind of went back to normal. That was kind of cool. So um, I am going to give you a close up with the studio light off in just a bit. So you can kind of see some of the dimension. Um, I'm just going to keep working on these. Like I told you guys the last time with the, the black one that I did, which I was really happy with. I'm, but I'm certainly no pro at these, um, and it takes some effort to get them where you want them, and I think I just need to be patient with the process. We all know I don't particularly like to be bad at things, so here I am just working these weird peaks. I really don't like them. I think I would like this piece a lot better if... It just had kind of the cloudy dimension on the other side without those peaks. One thing I do think is kind of cool is this does kind of have those ghost cells sort of look like cloud pearls, which of course are super popular right now. So maybe that's kind of a redeeming quality of it. But um, yeah, it's not what I was going for, but uh, my husband may have rescued this one. So we'll see. Let me know what you think. Are you... Um, feeling like my husband about it or do you think you would have been feeling like me I will get these down I just have to be patient with the process so um, don't forget to save 20% on the color art website with Mandy1120 as a promo code it's in the description box below um, I'll all right everyone I do not like this um, so it may not make it, but I asked my husband and he likes it. So I'm going to share the video with you. This is nothing like what I had in mind when I do negative space swipes. Um, what I have in mind always has a little bit of body where it's like, you know, some movement other than kind of the straight across thing, which is sort of what happened here. We do have a little bit of strange movement here. Um, but also, my cells got really big and kind of wonky, which I don't love. Um, you can see where I tried to catch some of it and just draw some squigglies, which did give a little bit of interest there. Sorry, my dog's drinking water again. I do like the little ghost cloud looking cells. Um, you can see the beautiful interference color and in the pigment. My husband said he really likes it. Um, and it's one of his favorites. He likes negative space. I like negative space, but I like it a different composition. Now, if one of you made this, I would love it. So I know I'm probably just being picky because it's not what I had in mind. Um, what I did do to kind of create a little bit of interest is I dipped my skewer in my interference color and I went around some of the lines to create some interest. So when it's under resin, that should create some interest that maybe the composition doesn't. 
Um, I really thought about scooping it up and trying to do some sort of switcheroo thing, but I'm not very great at that, and I obviously haven't practiced it. So I don't know that, you know, if it's a decent piece, I don't want to kill it. I told my husband that I probably was going to pour over it. He was like, no, <laughs> I'll hang it in my office. So, you know, if, if it makes it that far, it may become his. But let me know what you think. This is part of the journey. Um, I don't like the straight across composition. If it were to be hung up, I would prefer it to be like this or maybe like this. Um, that's kind of the beauty of cradled wood boards is anyone can hang it how they want. If you wanted to hang it straight up and down, make it look like a bat, you could hang it like this. Um, but you can hang them kind of however suits you. So, um, yeah, I don't know. But let me know what you think. These are a lot harder than they look, so I'm going to keep practicing. You know I don't like being bad at things, but that's part of the journey. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and all your support. If you're not a subscriber, would love it if you would subscribe. Not all of the paintings are disasters. <laughs> but I'm honest about the journey. Um, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Um, check us out on our Facebook group, Fluid Art Friends. We'd love to have you join and share your art. Um, don't forget the color art discount code, Mandy1120, all lowercase, for 20% off anything on the website. And I'll show you guys the new prism pour colors very soon. Anyway, I love you guys. Thank you so much again. Take care. Bye. I don't always show you guys the dried results because I don't always have time before I upload. But I wanted to show you where the interference that I added kind of just added a little interest to those edges. My husband said he likes it better before I did that. So um, let me know what you think. Did Do you like the little extra sparkle around the edges under resin it will have a little more depth of course but let me know what you think i just thought i'd show you but that's this little booger dry needs to be resined we'll see what it looks like under resin i like it more than i did yesterday thanks again for watching